How do you know if an area is a good place to invest in? So you want to invest in property and you're looking at a variety of different suburbs to invest in. How do you actually know if the suburb you choose is a good suburb to invest in that will likely increase in value or if it's a bad suburb that is very risky and may decrease in value? Hey, I'm Ryan from onproperty.com.au helping you find positive cash flow property and this month we're talking all about research for the launch of my new course advanced property research which you can check out at onproperty.com.au forward slash suburb now I just want to put a disclaimer out there that this is probably not the best way to discover if an area is a good place to invest the best way is probably to get access to hundreds of different data points and be a super nerd and understand exactly how to analyze them and analyze the trends and know everything to do with a suburb being like a supercomputer. But most of us can't do that and most of us can only understand what a few different data points for an area mean. So this is going to be a good strategy for a lot of people out there, especially if you're not aware of how to do a lot of suburb research. But for those of you who are super smart, uh, you can obviously take this further and go into more detail. So the first thing that I think you should do when looking for a good place to invest is define good, okay? And this starts by actually understanding your financial goals and your lifestyle goals and understanding what sort of property and what sort of area is going to move you towards those goals as quickly as possible. For one person, they might just want an area that's extremely robust and low risk because they just want to maintain their money and their portfolio, maybe generate some cash flow as well. Other people might be after fast equity growth because they're making the bulk of their income from their property portfolio and they want to be able to expand quickly. So depending on who you are and depending on your goals, the definition of good area is going to change. So it's important to understand, okay, what are my financial goals? What's the property investment strategy I've chosen to achieve those goals? And therefore, what kind of suburb am I looking for that fits in with my property investment strategy? So sit down, take some time to think about what do I actually want to achieve from property? What strategy am I going to use? Is it buy and hold? Is it positive cash flow? Is it renovation? All this sort of stuff. And then try and work out, okay, what is a good suburb for renovation or for positive cash flow or for buy and hold, you know? So first understand what is good. Uh, for most people, I think what's going to be helpful when looking for a good suburb is to try and minimize your risk. And as well, we want to maximize our return, but I think that for a lot of people should be a secondary to actually minimizing our risk. Because a lot of people go in and they're looking at a suburb and they're just looking at the upside. We get our greed on and we're thinking about how much money we can make from this deal and we're not thinking about the possibilities of things going wrong. So for a lot of people, I think minimizing their risk and focusing on the risks of an area to assess whether or not it's a good place to invest is probably the best place to start. And then after you've assessed the risk, then you can look at um, data points of the area that indicate that you may be able to get maximum returns for the area. So to do this, we want to look for what I like to call red flags. So these are risk aspects of an area. So an example of this would be a high vacancy rate in an area would be a red flag that that area is oversupplied and may not be the best place to invest in. There's a lot of different red flags that you want to look for. You want to look for capital growth trends in the area. I especially get worried when an area has decreased in the last 12 months and especially when it's decreased significantly in the last 12 months. So when looking at capital growth trends, uh, be aware that if an area is showing some abnormality in capital growth, that can be a red flag. And a red flag doesn't mean don't invest in this area. It just means do more research to understand why is the capital growth trend happening the way that it's happening. You can also look for uh, high or increasing vacancy rates is a red flag for an area. So if vacancy rates are actually increasing over time, then that indicates that there's either more and more supply or there's less and less demand for properties in the area. And that can be a red flag. Population decline can also be a red flag for an area and high vendor discounts. So a vendor discount is how much a property is discounted compared to its listing price. 
So if you list a property for a million dollars and you sell it for $950,000, then your vendor discount is 5%. So if vendor discounts are, of an area are quite high, then that could indicate that there's a lack of demand or there's excess supply in the area because people are being forced to discount their properties in order to sell. And this means prices can go down over time. So there's a couple of red flags to look for. Poor capital growth trends, high and increasing vacancy rates, population decline and high vendor discounts. And there are a bunch of other red flags you can look for like days on market, and things like that. But if you start with those four, that's a great place to start. And I do actually have a checklist which has 10 main indicating factors of an area as well as five secondary factors that you can go through and fill out. That's available for you inside the advanced suburb research course, which you can check out at onproperty.com.au forward slash suburb. And in that course, I also have videos. I go through each data point in detail to tell you what to look for as well as what actually classifies a red flag and what should you be worried about. So if you need help understanding an area, understanding red flags of an area, check out that course at onproperty.com.au forward slash suburb. Okay, so now that we've gone through and we've collected our data and we've found a couple of red flags, I find that the less red flags an area has, the better chance that you've found a good area. Almost every area that I research seems to have at least one red flag or one potential issue with the area. But when I research an area that's a poor area to invest in, something like Port Hedland in WA, which has decreased about 16%, I think the last I looked in the last 12 months, so something like Port Hedland has a whole bunch of red flags when we look at that area. And so the more red flags an area has, the more likely it isn't going to be a good suburb to invest in. And then the less red flags an area has, the more likely it is to be a good suburb because there's less risks associated with that area. So by looking for red flags and then identifying suburbs with fewer red flags than other suburbs, that kind of indicates that this could potentially be a good area to invest. After you've collected data, it's always worthwhile doing extra research. And if you're seriously considering investing in an area, then you should be talking to real estate agents. You should check the council website to find out what developments are happening in the area. You should be assessing properties on a regular basis to see what's happening in the market, what's available. And there's a lot of other research that you can do, which we won't get into today. Um, but yeah, infrastructure projects, development plans, uh, Bunnings, Coles or Woolies, if they've moved into an area, often people assume that if Bunnings or Woolies or Coles or Audi have moved into an area, then they've actually done some research to move into a growing area. That means they're going to increase their profits into the future. So if those things are starting to move into an area, then that's obviously a good sign as well and could potentially be an indicator of a good suburb. As well as if you see cafes and restaurants and I guess the street shops improving in a suburb and becoming better shops, then that's obviously going to increase the desirability of an area, which can also indicate a good suburb. So go to the suburb, drink some coffee. If it's good coffee, then you know that could be an indicator. Obviously, that's just one small indicator of many. So don't just have a good espresso and think I'm going to invest in this area. But you understand what I mean. Do look at the data, but then also do some speculative research, uh, talking to real estate agents, looking at Coles or Woolies or Bunnings or something like that, and also look at, I guess, the shops and cafes and stuff in the area. So how do you know if an area is a good place to invest? Well, for a lot of people, a good area will be one with minimal risks, so minimal red flags, and also it'll be one with good signs that the demand exceeds the supply in the area. So there's more people who wanna buy in the area than there is properties to buy. I hope that this has been helpful, helping you understand how to identify good suburbs and how to avoid bad suburbs. You can check out my full course on advanced suburb research if you are serious about investing in property and ready to take the next step. This course is going to help you understand suburbs and find the best suburb to invest in. Check it out on property.com.au forward slash suburb. And until next time, guys, stay positive.